I'm Andrew Wood. I'm a professor of biophysics at Swinburne University of Technology in Melbourne. My area of expertise is in biophysics, which is applying physics to biological problems. In particular, we've been looking at training technologists to work in hospitals. I'm Professor Rodney Croft from the University of Wollongong, and my research area is concerned with determining whether radiation causes adverse health effects in humans. So 5G, of course, is just a name. It doesn't have a meaning physically. So what we have is a whole lot of research that's explored how the electromagnetic energy works and whether or not it can, in fact, hurt people. This research has been going on for many years and that's what we rely on when we look to see whether 5G is going to cause a problem or not. There's been a great deal of research looking at the effects of EME on humans. Of course, there's been a lot of work that supplements this using animals and various other methodologies, but certainly in humans, science has tried to identify problems. Because there have been claims by some people of problems, science has tried to verify these claims but so far it just hasn't managed to do so. Similar to wildlife in any other country, then I think there's a fair amount of information that can be applied to evaluate the uh, potential harm. And I believe that, that there isn't any substantive evidence of there being any harm. I keep coming back to the question as to whether you can explain some sort of mechanism whereby low levels of EME could actually cause harm. So there is no established biophysical mechanism for low level EME to cause effects. The wireless EME from communication devices is very safe for the public. It's extremely low, uh, much, much lower than the standards that we have here in Australia and around the world, usually between about 100 and 10,000 times below that level, so very, very small. So in terms of health, there's absolutely no issue there. It's always safe, yes. Yeah. So the emissions from base station towers are monitored fairly regularly. So there is a, a national program for measuring emissions from base stations and all this information is publicly available. It's on a website and so anybody can go to their postcode and find out what transmitters or what base stations are in their neighbourhood and they can see exactly what's being emitted, who's operating the transmitters and what the levels are as a percentage of the Australian limit. <music>